structuring. Hallelujah. And I believe the Spirit of the Lord is doing mm -hmm. just that. Um, on July, in July 2009, uh, when the Lord called me uh, into the apostleship, um, he said, you don't know what this is going to cost, but what I ask of you is a yes. You don't know where the direction or how far I want to take you. But what I ask of you is to give me a yes. And you never <clears throat> understand where God wants to take you or why God wants to take you. Why God is positioned or called you for a particular thing. But the one thing I've learned is that if you can tell God yes, it's not going so concerned about our flaws and frailties as he is about our ability to yield. Sometimes we focus on our flaws, we focus on our frailties, we focus on our insecurities, we focus on the areas where we feel as though we're not qualified to carry uh, such a weight of glory for God. But I learned that God always just use the person who had a yes. He uses people based upon their ability to surrender and their capability to say yes. Because if we look through the word of God, we always find that there are flawed men and women who have carried the gospel, who have walked through the process to get us <clears throat> the word of God that we read today. There's no person in that word that does not have some type of frailty, flaw, or weakness. And God revealed it to us in the word so that we would know it's never about your frailty. It's never about your flaw. Neither is it about your weakness, but it's about your yes. He's looking for availability, not perfection. He said, I need availability, not perfection, because sometimes we think God wants us to be perfect, and he knew that we couldn't be. But he said, I'm not asking for your perfection, but I need you to be available. And in your space of being available, it'll transform you into what I need you to be, a vessel that's fit a vessel that is able to be used for my glory, a vessel that is able to step into what I've called and perfected and built you to be. So there is something about God that he looks at man who was created in this image and understands that we could never be what we would want ourselves or how we would want ourselves to be but he understands that even in that space he's yet willing to use us so i think the thing about god that we could never really understand or comprehend is that he is a god <clears throat> that is all loving he's a god that's all merciful He's a God that's all powerful, but he's a God that also has an extended hand looking for vessels that will just say yes. So we're talking about rebuilding. We're talking about restructuring. Why does God want to rebuild or restructure us? Why does God want to do that? Because there's more that he has for there's always a purpose of why God does a thing, why God calls for a thing, or why God responds at a thing. He's not responding to keep us in the same place, but he always responds to rebuild or to restructure, to put us in a better place. And sometimes our comfortability will fight the rebuilding process. Sometimes what we love will stop us from growing. 
sometimes what's good for us uh, is not necessarily great for our advancement. And so things that seem good sometimes are not good because they can bring you into a comfortable state. And many times comfortability can become our friend. And we can go through life just in cycles of comfort. And we don't want to really challenge ourselves because once we're comfortable, it's okay. And once we're, we're, we get to a certain stage in life, we feel as though it's okay. This is good enough. I've done enough. I'm, I'm okay right here. But God is a God that says, I can see how far I can take you if you can allow me to rebuild you, if you can allow me to restructure you, there's always more to you than what you see. And so in that space, you have to compromise your own mindset or, or, or compromise your thought process to say, build me again. So I want to talk briefly. I'm not going to be long today. Jeremiah 18. I'm going to talk very briefly from Jeremiah 18. Thank you. Amen. You can be seated if you're here. Amen. For those that are watching us online, thank you for watching us. Jeremiah 18, verses 1 through 6. Jeremiah 18. Anytime, anytime I think about this process of rebuilding, I have to understand that there is an order that comes to rebuilding. There's an order that comes to this process. And I have to understand that anytime God wants to rebuild something, that there's something that has to be torn down. Anytime God wants to rebuild, there's always something that has to be torn down. It has to be a place where I'm yielding myself. And here, God is giving this prophet this example. He says, the word of the Lord came. The word which came, hallelujah, to Jeremiah from the Lord, saying, Arise and go down to the potter's house. And there I will cause thee to hear my words. And then I went down to the potter's house, and behold, he wrought a work on the wheels. And the vessel that he made of clay was smart in the hands of the potter. And so he made it again another vessel, as seemed good to the potter to make it. Then the word of the Lord came to me, saying, O house of Israel, cannot I, O house of Israel, cannot I do with you as this potter, saith the Lord. Behold, as the clay is in the potter's hand, so are ye in my hand, O house of Israel. This here, the prophet is being spoken to, and the Lord is ministering to him. Excuse my tears, it's a heavy word. The Lord is ministering unto him. And he tells him to go down and watch the process of <coughs> a potter is dealing with clay, dealing with the image and the likeness of something that he wants to form it to be, <coughs> to be beautiful. He wants to form it to be something that would be um, worth value. He wants to form it into a state where it would be in the positioning to uh, be expanded for its fulfillment. And he says, I want you to watch 
because whenever the potter recognizes that the clay has a flaw, has a fault, there's something in it, somehow the potter says, let me put it back again. And he continues this process over and over and over and over and over until he sees that literally the vessel is worthy to be brought out. The full value of what's supposed to come out of it is now revealed. And he said, I will not reveal it before this time. And then God references the prophet and he says, I want you to understand because now when you look at this, he tells him, watch this process. And then he says to us, O house of Israel, cannot I do with you as this power? He's asking a question now to the prophet. He wanted you to see the process, see that it's been broken, see that it's been crushed. See that every time it gets to a certain place of beauty, a certain form, a certain shape, a certain posture that looks like it would be at its greatest state, you've got to understand this because most of us, we tell God we are right where this is good enough, God. This is, this is great. This is okay. I'm, I'm moving forward. I'm working in this. I'm, I'm all right right here. But God is asking us a question. He's asking you a question today, and he wants to know, can he rebuild you? He's asking you the question, can he rebuild you? Out of, out of all the years that you've been on the earth, out of all the processes and trials that have happened, out of all the things that you have gone through and who you have become today, he said, today I want to I wanna ask you, can I do with you? He should. Can I do with you what I really desire to do with you? Not necessarily what you desire to do for your own life. Not necessarily according to your own will, your own dream, your own pattern, your own life. But can I? Can I do with you as this potter has done with the clay? Can I, can I literally bring you into a state? Shut down, where I can interrupt your life, where I can begin now to, to reconstruct you. No matter how much you know yourself, no matter how much you think you understand where you're going, can I interrupt your plan and start the process of rebuilding? Because what I want you to become, you've not become it yet. See? This is the hard question because maybe you feel as though you're all right. But, but he says, I need you to understand that you are not okay where you are. You are not Shibata. You are not okay where you are. And if you think you are, he says, I need you to look back at the potter. Understand that I brought you here in reference because there is something that I see in you. There is something that I see in you that I wanted to, to reflect me. I wanted to be something that people can see the value, the weight of who I've called you to be. I want you to carry me. I want you to be able to carry me in the measure that no longer will it be a questionable uh, doubt. No longer will there be anything in you that will say, I'm not sure of who I am. No longer will there be anything in you that will question who it is that he has called you to be. But he said, I'm trying to get you into a state that whatsoever I have called for you to be, you can be. And many of us struggle because we don't know how to allow God to form us. We 
don't know how to allow God to formulate and push us into his direction because of our self. Can I tell you that self gets in the way of God? Self gets in the way. The, the difference between us and the clay that was here that the potter was working with is the potter, the clay didn't have a will. The clay was not, it didn't have itself to deal with. The clay was just only, amen, able to move or maneuver or to be changed according to what the potter's view was. But the problem many times is that we struggle because why? We are looking at ourselves and we want to tell God what he should or should not do. We want to tell God what is okay and what isn't. We want to tell God, you know what, don't touch this, but touch this. We want to tell God many things and because of that, we, amen, get in the way of him being the true potter. Do you hear me today? We get in the way of God really putting us on the wheel because every time he gets us on the wheel, many of us get off the wheel. Every time God puts us on the wheel, we begin to get off the wheel because we say it is too difficult to be rebuilt. We say, I'm too old. I, I can't change my mind. I can't change my thoughts. I can't change my patterns. I can't change my ways. I can't. We begin to put ourselves in the position to say, we're going to be the one that tells the potter how to reconstruct us. But today, I need you to move self out of the way. Today, I need you to recognize and to understand that it is not too hard. It is not hard. It's only hard because self is in the way. It is only hard because your agenda is in the way. It is only hard when you begin to put yourself above the plans and the purposes of God. If you understand, amen, the will of God, then you will begin to yield, oh God, to the placement and the, and the space of where God will want you to be. Listen, it's hard when you fight against it. But it is easy, hey, if we lay ourselves down. It is easy when we lay ourselves down. It is easy. He come out I don't care what it is. If you don't like to read, it becomes easy when it's a part of the will of God. If you don't like to serve, it becomes easy when you know it's a part of the will of God. If you don't like school, it becomes easy if it's a part of the will of God. If you don't like your marriage, it becomes easy when you understand it's part of the will of God. Oh, you don't hear me today. It has to be a place of agreement. The only way that he can put you on the wheel is when you agree, when you say, God, I'm in agreement for the transformation. And so we won't have to wrestle when it's easy. Come on. You've got to transition your mind. There must be a state and a place that tells you, hey, come on, Shanda, that tells you, okay, God, I'm tired of fighting. I'm done with the fighting. Do you understand that most people are hindered from progressing and being rebuilt because of the fight? There's a fight in you that you don't realize. There's resistance in you that you don't realize. There is struggle in you that you don't realize. And so you have to come into the place now to tell God, I give you permission. He says, can I not do with you as this potter? He said, I just want to know why. Because I want you to understand. He said, I need to rebuild you for your promotion. I need to rebuild you. I need to put a new blueprint for you. I need to begin to cause you to step outside of who you understood yourself to be. And he says, all I need you to do is come into the position when you can follow instruction. And when you follow instructions, you'll gain wisdom. You'll gain insight. Come on, when you follow instruction, you'll begin to step into different dimensions. Do you understand what it takes to advance? The advancement of the rebuilding only comes when you step into the position to say, I'm willing to follow the instruction. And I want you to understand that fear hinders you from being rebuilt. Why? Because sometimes the instruction is bigger than what you can comprehend. Sometimes the instruction is bigger than how you know how to function. Sometimes the instruction is not within your mindset or your capability, but he's not trying to ask you to fulfill it. He's trying to ask you to just be the clay. Just allow him to direct you even when you cannot understand, when you cannot comprehend, when you cannot figure it out. Why? Because the instruction is always bigger than you. The instruction is never about you and if you can understand it, then you are not in faith and you're not in the place of positioning to be rebuilt. So God always 
challenges you to put you in another dimension. You've got to understand what I'm saying today. God is not a God of comfortability. He's never been and he never will. If you really going to walk with God, if you're really going to step into a placement with God, God, amen, will let you get to a certain measure, but he never, amen, plans on you staying there. He plans on pulling you to something else. And most of us want to serve God from a place of comfortability. And he said, that's not how you serve me. That's not how you yield to me. That's not how I push you into the next dimension. Why? Because he says, I'm trying to teach you how to become clay and you've got to become clay when you give up your will you can never be rebuilt as long as you are not willing to allow God to adjust you you can never be rebuilt if you don't allow God to deal with the area that you don't want him to touch you can never be rebuilt if you don't want to deal with the difficult place in you you can never be rebuilt if you don't address yourself if you don't see yourself in the mirror see you've got to understand the potter was always looking at the clay and he kept seeing no nope, there's another spot he kept seeing no nope, there was something else he kept seeing something there. So he was looking through his eyes. You got to stop looking through your eyes and allow God's eyes, amen, to be seen through you. You got to say, what do you see, God? Where do you see me, God? What do you require of me, God? Where are you taking me, God? It is an element for the fulfillment of the will of God to be made known. And the will of God is not man's will. The will of God is not a fleshly thing. The will of God is is not something you can access according to your feelings or your emotions. The will of God, amen, can only bring pleasure by the Spirit. Yes, it's, not, it's not by the flesh. It's not by your flesh. You can't you cannot please God. See, when you walk in the flesh, it's enmity against God. When you walk in the flesh, it is not according to pleasing the will of God. And so that's why he pulls you consistently out of the flesh. That's why he doesn't pay attention to your flesh. That's why he tells you to do something that you don't have the capability to do because it's not about your flesh. He's trying to teach you how to step into another dimension to supersede and to get on his calendar. We're not speaking heaven's calendar for a uh, terminology we're talking about getting in sync with heaven's calendar by pulling on the spirit more than the flesh but the problem is we stay more in the flesh than the spirit and so there's a dragging when it comes to the spirit for being rebuilt why because we don't like being challenged yes, God. so the challenge is why does god always Drop us in places. And then say, I want to rebuild. I want to I want to do something else. I want to add something to it. I want to make something great. Because he knows he can't just tell you from one to one thousand. So he'll put you at one and say, now try for a hundred. He'll put you at a hundred and say, try for five hundred. He'll put you at five hundred and say, try for a thousand. He's why? Because he understands you got to build, be rebuilt and rebuilt and rebuilt for the fulfillment of who he called you to be because you can't see your full self you don't know who you really are I know you've heard me say it many times you've heard me speak it many times but you really don't know who you really are and so God says I have to process you like this I have to keep putting you on the wheel and I give you space and time to rise to a certain space uh, and when you get there he says I, now that's not where you're going to end uh, that is just where you are for the moment so you got to now understand uh, you got to be willing to be pulled he, come on, shut up. a lot of people People don't like being pulled you got to understand but if you're going to be rebuilt and restructured you got to be pulled upon you got to be chiseled upon you can you understand God is not a God of complacency God is a progressive God God is a spirit and spirit never stops y'all hear me if God is a spirit and the spirit never stops how can we stop if God is a spirit and the spirit never stops progressing the spirit never stops moving the spirit never stops and Advancing, how can we stop? Come on. If heaven is still ascending, if heaven is still advancing, when you die, your spirit will still.
be accelerated. Do you understand where we are? The rebuilding process never stops. The restructuring process never stops. So God said, I have to get you in position so that you can be restructured and rebuilt. He, he tells the prophet here, I said, God, you, you deal with the prophet so strong here because you give him such a wonderful example, but then you ask a question. You deal with him and then you ask a question. God, God is so powerful because he deals with us, but then he asks us a question and he puts us in position because he said, I'm not just showing you something to show you, but I'm showing you something because I'm trying to ask you a question. Are you ready to step into this dimension? God's trying to push us into another place. So he asks questions for a purpose. He said, can I not do this to you? He shows you something, but then he said, can I not prove myself that I can reveal and do this in this dimension and push you in another direction? God is trying to open us up. Anybody want to be open? Come on. Anybody want to be pushed into another dimension? He said that you've got to understand what it is that I'm doing. I'm revealing something so I can open you. I'm showing you something so I can peel back something Something to put you in another dimension to get you in another alignment to transition your thoughts transition your mindset transition your thinking to now you can enter into a space where you have never been before I say God you are powerful Yes, God. because he understands the rebuilding process takes time hey, he understands the rebuilding process will take you through stages and if it was so easy he would take us from 1 to 100. Come on. That's why they live 900 years. Come on. They live a thousand years back in the old dispensation. Why? He understood it was a process of time. But now we're in a different dispensation. So what once took 900 years can take 70. Y'all hear me? What once took 975 years can now take 50. Why? Because if we yield to the rebuilding process in our dispensation, you don't have to wait till you're 700 and 50 to produce. You can produce at 20, 30, 40, 50. You can produce. Why? Because you're willing to be rebuilt continually for the transformation of who he has called you to become and the manifestation can come to pass. Woo. Hear me today. God says, I want you to catch this. Ezekiel 37. I want you to see this because the spirit of the Lord is really, he's really challenging us to be rebuilt. I've always told you that God always put us in places and because he has called us to be a spiritual hub, it is always progressive. He puts us in places for movement. He puts us in places for us to see a thing but not necessarily become a thing. Hear me, there, there's, a, there's a difference. You can see something and not become it. But most times when people see something, they become it. They get connected to it. They get overtaken in it. But God never wants you to see something and get overtaken in it because you always have to be in a position to be re built. That means whatever he asks of you, you can give it. Come on, somebody. Whatever he requires of you, you can let it go. Why? Because you haven't been entangled. It hasn't become you. It is just something that's been given to you. You are just a steward over a thing. Come on. You've got to understand, if you're going to always be in the state to be repealed, then you've got to become a steward. Somebody say a steward. I can never become a steward if I don't understand the transitioning of what it is that God's trying to perfect me in. And so most people, they be become the thing that God gives and they get connected to the thing that God gives and it was never for you to stay in that state. It was just to process you for the rebuilding of the next stage so you can't be too attached to anything. Hear what I'm saying? That in order to be rebuilt, that means whatever you connected to, you can't be too attached. Come on. You can like it. It can be connected to you. It can be around you, but at any time if he require it because I'm going into the next stage of rebuilding, I gotta be willing to give it up. Oh, y'all don't hear me today. When you're being rebuilt, you can have it today, love it today, work with it today, but tomorrow, he said, let it go. Why? Because I'm rebuilding for something greater. I'm rebuilding for something bigger. I'm rebuilding for the next dimension. My God. Ezekiel 37. Mm. I want you to hear me today. There's a space. There's a space where 
where God's trying to take you. And I and I look at this passage and I said, oh, I, I said, God, this is powerful because it says that the hand of the Lord. Now, 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 now first he talked to Jeremiah and he said that, that the voice of the Lord was speaking to him and he said, Arise and go and he asked him a question. Now we see the hand of the Lord. I want you to understand. Anytime a man rebuilding comes forth, it takes a voice and it takes hands. Hear what I'm saying? And now it says that it is not only him speaking, but it says the hand of the Lord was what upon Ezekiel. And it carried him out in the spirit. See, first it was a voice, but now it is a hand. I want to I want you to understand something. So God is not just speaking, He's trying to put his hand upon you so that He can carry you somewhere. Come on. He's trying to put his hand upon you so he can take you into another dimension. He said it took him out into the spirit of the Lord and it set him down. Do you notice the comparison of the prophets? Jeremiah, he said, arise and go down. Now here is Ezekiel, the hand of the Lord is upon him and now what it takes him down. You got to understand, there is something about God when he's rebuilding and restructuring. It, said, it says it sets him down in the midst of a valley which was full of bones. Now I say, God, what kind? You, you, you keep showing us these comparisons. First, he shows us clay. Now he shows us bones. Y'all hear me? He always shows you something that seems to be a man dead. He shows you something that seems to be messed up. He shows you something that seems to be that is not going to be able to function. Do y'all hear me? He always shows you something. But the key of understanding God is to be able to say, I'm willing to be rebuilt. Hear me? The key to understanding God that no matter what, he carries you out in the midst of and sets you in the midst of. You got to be able to understand this is a part of my rebuilding. Come on. It is not for me to stay here. It is for me to progress from here. It is not for me to be in this place. Because why would God carry him out and then sit him in the midst of bones? Come on. Why would God take him in that space and say, I'm going to transition you in the midst of Bones looks like nothing. Verse 2. Come on. Give me the next verse. I want you to see this. And then he calls him to pass by round about. And behold, there were very many in the open valley. And lo, they were very, very dry. My God. They were dry. Do y'all see that? There was bones, but the bones were dry. Can you see that? It says, he said he carried him out. Caused him to pass around them. He don't understand what's happening. He said, God, why are you showing me bones? I thought you wanted a rebuilding. I thought you wanted to, to transition me. I thought you wanted to push me into another dimension. You got to understand, God don't show you where everything is beautiful. God takes you into the driest, deadest place, y'all. You see, most people misunderstand the rebuilding. But he says, I have to work from the inside out because most of you are dry. So when you're dry, I bring you into something dry to show you that it has the capability to be transitioned. You don't hear me? So he said, I use examples. That's why God shows us stuff and he asks us a question. Why? Because he wants you to have the understanding of what it is that he's releasing so that you can transition yourself. Look what he says. Verse 3 he says this and he said unto him, so the man kept these bones. There's another question. Can these bones live? And he answered, oh Lord God, thou knowest. Because this is a crazy question. Why would you bring me, your prophet, into a man of valley of dry bones and then show me the bones? You brought me in the spirit. You pushed me down in here. You showed it to me. And then you said, does it have the capability to live? He said, I don't even know why. Because he recognized that God brought him here and asked him a question. He said, I don't know the answer. So I'm going to leave that to you. Do you understand how serious this is? You keep trying to figure something out in God. You don't have to know the answer. You just need to tell him you know your word. Oh, y'all. He said, I don't know, but you know. I don't know why you brought me here, but you don't know. I don't know why you asking me to do something that seems impossible, but you know. I don't know, God, why it is. You keep bringing me around all these dead situations, but God, you know. I don't know, but you, y'all don't hear me today. There is something that is happening in the measure of the realm of the spirit that you got to tell God you know I don't know what's going on but you know what the answer is I can't figure this thing out but you know I don't know what is happening God this thing is so supernatural it's so divine I can't understand it but I know that you know it I, I don't know the answer but you 
know. He said, I don't know what you're talking about. Hey, 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 you showing me know. some bones, but you know. You showing me some stuff I don't know, but you know. What is it, God, you revealed to me that I can't even comprehend, but you know, y'all hear me. There's stuff that God has spoke about us, prophesied, said to us, but I don't know, but you know. Come on. There's stuff that seems impossible. I don't know, but God, you know it. Why does God keep showing you stuff that you can't comprehend? But God said, I don't know, but you know. Y'all hear me? The prophet was saying, I don't know why you keep showing me all this stuff. Y'all, if anybody had visions, anybody had dreams, anybody heard heard God say something. Anybody stepped in and said, why do you keep showing me this stuff? And then God said, can these bones in? God asked you a question. Can you access it? Can you have it? Do you want it? Come on. God will show you something that you think is impossible and then ask you a question. Y'all hear me today. But you got to tell God the right answer. You know. Hey, I'm trying to help you. It is not about what you comprehend. You got to tell God you know the answer. He said this, he said, he said unto me, prophesy unto me, these bones, upon these bones, and say to them. Now, after he tells God, you know, the Lord said, prophesy. He said, wait a minute. God, if you know, why don't you just tell me the answer? God, if you know, why don't you just tell me what it is? Why would you tell me to speak something out of my mouth? See, you don't understand it. Because you're rebuilding and you got to be in agreement with it. You're rebuilding, you got to speak to it. You're rebuilding, you got to tell God what it is. He said, I'm going to tell you what to do with these bones. Since you said, I know what you got to do is prophesy. See, God responded back. You thought God was going to give you the answer. God said, no, I need you to participate. Open up your mouth and prophesy for your rebuilding. Oh, y'all ain't hear me today. He said, open up your mouth. Out and prophesy for the change. Uh, prophesy for the rebuilding. And he says, oh ye tripos, uh, hear the word of the Lord. Uh, he says, speak to that thing uh, and tell him, hear the word of the Lord. Uh, when it's time for rebuilding, uh, when people acting crazy, when stuff is not going the way it's supposed to, all I need you to do is prophesy y'all if you, and say, hear the word of the Lord. Uh, don't hear your words. Uh, hear the word of the Lord. Uh, the word of the Lord has spoken Spoken concerning this matter. Why? Because God knows. And he told me to prophesy. And once God knows a thing, he has the capability to perform it. It ain't in my ability to perform. It's in his ability. It's only in my ability to agree and prophesy. It's not in his ability, amen, to say something else. It is in my ability to prophesy what he said. It don't matter what people say. It's in my ability to follow the instruction. That's why I say you got to listen and you got to follow instruction. God wanted to see prophet. Can you follow the instruction that I'm telling you? I didn't ask you to do nothing else but prophesy. I didn't ask you to try to figure out if the bones was going to move. I didn't ask you to try to figure out what was going to happen. I just need you to prophesy. Just prophesy to it. Now he says, listen. And listen, behold, I will cause breath to enter into you now y'all y'all didn't see this most people thought the breath had to enter into the bone first but if you look at the scripture he said after the lord spoke to him, god unto these bones behold i will cause breath to enter into and then what ye shall live now i said god there's a comparison here because he's talking to the prophet he tells the prophet to prophesy now when he tells the prophet to prophesy he says lord god unto these bones i, I behold i will cause breath to enter into you but i believe it was twofold god wasn't just causing breath to enter into the bone god was causing a rebuilding to enter into Jer uh, to ezekiel there was a twofold manifestation he was breathing come on he said i prophesy and i breathe breath into you and what was happening he was bringing belief into ezekiel at the time he was prophesying to the situation do y'all hear me today there are some things that god said i'm doing a double two for one i'm doing a two for one y'all know y'all like specials y'all like sales y'all like discounts y'all like rebates this is the time god said i'm gonna do two for one prophesy speak to the bone and when you speak to the bone i'm gonna allow breath to enter in enter into you 
and then he said, and ye shall live. He was already alive. Why would he need to live again? He had to be rebuilt, y'all. He was already here. But why would God say you will live? Because there was another dimension God was getting ready to bring him into that he was going to be rebuilt into another person to step into another dimension to believe God in another light. Look what he says here. He says that I will lay sinews upon you. And I will bring up flesh upon you. And I will cover you with skin. And I will put breath in you. And you shall what? Live. There it is again. And you shall know that I am the Lord. Now I said, God, you talking to bones. Wow. To a prophet to talk to bones. Bones getting ready to be rebuilt. Something that looks impossible is getting ready to be rebuilt. Y'all hear me? Something in your life that seems like it's been here, it's been dead, there's no light to it, nothing can happen. But God said, I'm getting ready to rebuild. Oh my God. He said, I'm getting ready to release something. I'm getting ready to do something. I'm going to lay sinews. And he said, I'm going to bring flesh upon you. Now you got to understand. He said these bones have the capability to carry a spirit because when you die, come on, not only are you dying, but you're going back to the Lord. But here he says, I want you to understand at any time the spirit can come back in. Why? Because you prophesied. You didn't hear me. There's some stuff in your life that looks like it's a bone. But if you prophesy, sinews and flesh will come. Why? Because they said the spirit has to go where the the prophetic wind is blowing. Y'all hear me? The spirit of the Lord came huh, and it unctioned itself back into a place. Huh? So he said after you prophesy, huh, I'm going to put sinews. I'm going to put it together. Huh? And then I'm going to put flesh upon it. Huh? But if you keep your mouth closed, huh, your rebuilding process can't start. Huh? I need somebody to prophesy huh, for your rebuilding. Prophesy to the bone. Prophesy to the bear. Oh, y'all hear me? Huh? To the bear state that you're in. Prophesy Side to where you are. Transition yourself up out of where you are. Call forth that spouse. Call forth that children. Call forth that land. Call forth. Yes. Call it forth in the name of Jesus. Prophesy to it. He says that you will live. And he says you're going to know that I am the Lord. Now this is powerful because he says you don't comprehend yet. That I'm God. You, you don't comprehend. So he says, I got to show you something. Come on, keep going. He says, I got to show you something. And it says, I prophesy as I was commanded. See, this is why people get mad. Y'all don't understand. You got to be commanded. Y'all hear me? If you don't understand how to be commanded, you can't accept the command of the Lord. You have to be. He said he prophesied as he was commanded. I just commanded some of y'all to prophesy and your mouth didn't open. See, command is so important. When God says something, you got to do it immediately. And a lot of us miss our rebuilding. Why? Because God I say open up your mouth and say it you too scared to speak it you too scared to call it for him you too scared why because you trying to figure it out he said I didn't ask you to know I'm the one that know I just need you to prophesy I'm the one that can bring the life you don't give life I give life you don't give spirit I give spirit you don't give breath I give breath you gotta understand the transformation that begins to happen through the process of being commanded so being commanded is powerful. Jeez. See, we don't like being we commanded. Don't like it. We don't like it. But guess what? It is through command that results happen. Amen. Come on. Oh Amen. God. It is through command. See, if you give people a choice, you'll never get a job done. He said, Ezekiel, I ain't giving you no choice. Prophesy ah. as you were commanded. I know you don't even believe it. You looking at these bones, but I need you to prophesy. Open up your mouth and say what I tell you to say. And, and because of God, I'll open it up for you. Come on. He said, prophesy as you are commanded. Not what you feel, not what you see, not what your emotions 
doesn't say. Not what's around you. Not what a bill collector said. Uh, not what your family said. Uh, not what your auntie, children, cousin, mother, uncle, brother said. You got to prophesy as you are commanded. Quit getting in alignment with the wrong people. Prophesy as you are commanded. Many people are, amen, speaking the wrong thing. Why? Because they ain't prophesying as they were commanded. They're prophesying what they feel. Uh, and what you feel will get you in trouble. So you got to move beyond the feeling uh, and prophesy on the command. Transition. transition. Somebody said, I got a transition. I got a transition. I got a transition. He said, and there was, see, when he prophesied, there was what? A noise. Sata, a noise and then a shaking and the bones came together now you gotta imagine seeing bones everywhere y'all see you ain't really looking at this for real cause we hear the story but you gotta imagine I'm sure it was a smell I'm sure there was decay y'all know amen I'm sure amen they saw the marrow in the bone I'm sure they saw all of that but then he tells them this he said I want you to prophesy and it said there was a noise so I'm sure the bones started rattling. Y'all hear me? It was a sound of a rattling on the bone. Huh? Why? Because bone to bone coming together. Huh? Ain't no flesh. You're going to hear a sound. Come on. You're going to hear like a... You're going to hear something. You hear your bone pop sometimes. Huh? That's when bone hit bone. Come on. Huh? There's a place huh, where God's trying to show him. Huh? The noise began to come. Huh? And then there was a shaking huh? that began to happen. Why? Because huh? bones coming together. Huh? I don't think it was just the bone shaking. Huh? I I believe Ezekiel starts shaking. Huh? Like what in the world is happening? Huh? I'm your prophet God. I trust you. I did what you told me. Huh? And something crazy is happening. Do y'all know that God can do something so supernaturally crazy that it can blow your mind huh? in a matter of minutes? Huh? Now all of a sudden noise happening. Huh? Shaking the bones are coming together. Huh? Why? Because you prophesied huh? what God told you to say huh? for the rebuilding. Huh? Reconstruction is happening. Huh? There's something that seemed in Impossible now is becoming possible. God wants to rebuild today. He wants to rebuild. Somebody say God wants to rebuild. God wants to rebuild. So you got to put yourself in the position for him to be able to rebuild. I said, God, give me the next verse. I said, God, oh, my God. Oh, my God. Here he is. He's in a valley. He's seen bones. You're trying to rebuild him. You're trying to push him into another dimension. And it says, when he beheld and the sinews and the flesh came upon them and the skin. I said, where did the skin come from? Y'all hear me? See, because there was no skin. When he first entered and was carried out, it was only bones. But now it says skin. See, when you prophesy, when you're commanded, when you're in alignment, God will grow something that wasn't there. Y'all hear me? He'll bring something out that was not in position. I said, wow, God, because it wasn't no skin. It was only bones. But now he's bringing skin. He's allowing skin to manifest. Can I tell you today that God is trying to add some skin to your life? Something that you could not see, he's going to manifest for you. Something that you did not think you had the capability to bring to pass. He said, I'm not just going to bring sinews. He said, but I'm going to add the skin. And the skin covered them above. Now I said, my God, he brought them back into the state of a body. Come on, from a place of being broken, he rebuilt the body. Y'all hear me? There are places in us where we are broken, but God's going to rebuild your body. He's going to give you a fresh skin, not just skin that was wounded and broken and messed up. He's going to give you a fresh skin, which is an opportunity for a new life, to see yourself in a different demeanor. Come on, all the zits and, and, and pimples and pumps. Anybody need some new skin, y'all? Oh, y'all, hear me? I ain't talking about just natural. I'm talking about, amen, by the Spirit. He gonna let you glow like you never glowed. He gonna let you glisten like you never glistened. He gonna give you another skin as you prophesy and obey the word of the Lord. He gonna give you a fresh skin. He says, but there was no breath. So now we got a shell. <laughs> See, when you're being rebuilt, God will give you a shell. When you're being rebuilt, God will say, okay, here's the shell. This is the form. This is what I want to do. But I ain't breathe on you yet. You know what the problem is? Too many people going out with the shell. They're going out thinking, I got the shell. Now I got the skin. Listen, I've been prophesied to. I heard the word of the Lord. But he said, now that you've been prophesied to, you don't have no breath. So God said, don't go too quick. Even though you're being rebuilt, don't run out there without the breath. 
of God. Don't run out there with just the skin. Don't run out with the preface. Don't run out with the premise that you look good. Come on. But you got to do more than look good. You got to have the wind of God, the breath, the ruach of God, the anointing of God. A lot of people can look the part, but it ain't about looking the part. We can look good, but looking good don't mean nothing. You can look good and be stale bones. You can look good and be horrible. Come on. You can look good and your character ain't right. You can look good and you got lust issues and greed issues and ignorance issues. You can look good, but until you step into the next dimension, I'm talking to somebody today to say, now I need a breath. I don't just need a frame. I need the breath of God to breathe in me for change. Because if I look good without breath, it won't break no result to be rebuilt. So looking good is not enough. Yes, He said, it was no breath. Give me the next one, prophet. He says, and then he said unto me, prophesy unto the wind. Wow. Oh God, prophesy to the wind. Son of man, say to the wind, thus saith the Lord, come from the four winds. Shabbat. Y'all got to catch this. He said, come from the four winds. I don't just want a piece of a wind or any wind, but he said, prophesy and come from the four winds. Every part of God. Hear me? There's a manifestation through the north wind that you won't get through the east wind. North wind is restoration. East wind is to destruct and to destroy. South, y'all don't hear me. South wind transitions and builds you up. It's a building wind. We need every capacity of the wind. Uh, West wind brings things back into positioning uh, that were out of position. Uh, so he said don't just prophesy any wind. Uh, prophesy the four winds. Uh, you got to understand every wind represented something to make sure the proper alignment and the rebuilding and the restructuring took place. Uh, so if you build without all the winds in place, uh, your power, oh, y'all don't hear me, uh, your building gonna collapse. Uh, your building won't have the fulfillment. But he said I need you to prophesy to the four winds so that the fulfillment of the body can stand. Everybody in here has four winds. Now whether you access them, whether you use them, whether you operate them, whether you function them, it's up to you. If you don't know what wind to use with, you'll be calling for the wind, but you won't be calling for the right wind. You'll be speaking it, yes, Lord, let the wind blow. What wind you need to blow? You can just say something generically. God said, I don't need a generic wind. I need a precise wind. I need an accurate wind that can blow the breath of manifestation so that these people can come back to life. Do you hear me today? God is saying he's blowing on on us huh? on today the spirit huh? of every one of these winds huh? the north the south the east and the west huh? he got to destroy some stuff huh? he got to restore some stuff huh? he got to pull up some stuff huh? he got to advance some stuff huh? for you to be rebuilt huh? every one of the winds need to be a position huh? so don't just look for the destroying wind huh? you need the rebuilding wind huh? you need the uplifting wind huh? y'all don't hear me today huh? you got to transition your mind huh? into another dimension huh? for the fulfillment and the will of God can be made known. So he says, breathe upon these that they may live. Can I tell you today, there's a breath blowing upon you for the rebuilding and manifestation in your life, in this ministry. We call forth the four winds of God to begin to release upon this house, upon this property, upon this land, upon these people, upon those watching. We call forth the breath and the wind of God from every avenue to be able to function in this time. Yes. Yes. Listen, listen. So you got to understand. He said, I'm trying to give you a new framework. Yes, God. So you can live in a capacity you've never lived. You can live in a capacity you've never lived. Yes. But it's going to take your interest level to come forth. He said, you got to be concerned to engage with the attention of what's been given to you. See, when something is given attention to you, you got to give it attention back. You see, see, when something is given attention to you, if you don't pay attention to it, guess what? It won't be a result. But you, it says you got to pay attention. You got to be an interest, which means you got to be concerned. You got to engage. You got to.
gotta let God know I'm in, I'm with you, I'm coping. I'm, you gotta show interest. Huh? See, the problem is people come to church, but they don't show interest. The problem is people are around, but they don't show interest. Interest means I'm engaged. Come on, I'm locked in. I'm paying attention. I'm concerned. I got regard of what it is huh, that you have said. Huh? So God, if you telling me something, let me get engaged. Let me lock in in this thing huh? and let you know I'm all in. Huh? So we can say yes, but we don't really mean yes. Huh? Your yes becomes a yes when your interest huh, is peaked and you start now engaging in the thing that you told God yes. Huh? If you're going to walk and rebuild it, huh, you got to have courage. Huh? Courage to be fearless. Huh? Courage to be daring. Huh? Courage to be bold. Huh? Courage to stand up with everybody else and sit down. Huh? Courage to stand out when other people don't understand. Huh? Courage to speak a thing when people think you crazy. Courage to keep going and moving. Huh? When it seems like you should sit down, you got to have courage to be rebuilt. You can't be rebuilt sit down saying, I hope so. You got to be rebuilt by saying what God said. You are and go where God said go. Yes, God. You got to have determination. Hey, God. You got to have somebody say determination. determination. I'm going to be rebuilt. I got to have determination to continue without stopping. That means no matter what. See, yes, see, he sends him out in this, and he said, no matter what, you got to be determined. Determined to speak what I say, be commanded by what I say, and know that a result is coming beyond what Woo. you understand. Y'all hear me? See, determination means I'm not even looking at what it looks like. Determination means I can endure through long times. Yeah. Determination means when people say something, I'm, it's not moving me out of the position. Why? Because I've got determination. Determination means when other people don't act right, I'm still moving. Determination means when people fall off, I'm still moving. Determination, y'all don't hear me, means when stuff happens, I'm still moving. Why? When determination is when I don't have no money. Determination is when I got money. Determination is when I got friends. Determination is when I have none. Determination is when I got my spouse. Determination when my spouse don't even agree. Determine y'all are here. You gotta have determination that you going all the way according to what God said to be rebuilt for the fulfillment of the manifestation of your life. Somebody's got to be determined. And if you move by everybody around you, you ain't gonna get nowhere. I need somebody in your house to get determined at least one, at least one. And if you by yourself and you ain't determined, your house gonna fall. So you got to get up and get determined, y'all. Hear me? Somebody's got to be determined. Yes, Lord. Continuing without stopping. No matter how you feel, determined. I'm determined to be rebuilt. Do y'all hear? Do you do you hear me today? I'm determined to keep saying yes, even when I can't comprehend it. I, I'm determined. Whether people go or not, whether people hear or not, whether people say or not, I'm deter see, that's the kind of place that God's trying to get. He's looking for somebody who can get locked in like that for your rebuilding process. The problem is you ain't determined enough to rebuild yourself. Y'all hear me? You ain't determined enough to get in the face of God, to show God this is me. I'm ready to go forward. Oh, wait a minute. I slept 10 minutes over. Let me get up and start anyway. Y'all hear me? Wait a minute. I did this. Let me get up and do it anyway. I'm behind time and I'm still going to do it. See, determination means no matter what, I can't give up. I got to keep trying till I die. Come on, because I'm determined. Is there anybody in here that's determined? I don't know if I got any determined people in here today, but God's looking for determination because you can never rebuild yourself without determination. You can never grow without determination. You can never advance without determination. I need somebody who's determined today. You got to be determined. As I close today, one thing I noticed that neither neither of these prophets did. They didn't show disinterest. Mm. When the word of the Lord came to on, Jeremiah, God. and when the word of the Lord came to Ezekiel, ne or the hand of the Lord, neither one of them showed disinterest. My God. And I'm afraid today that many of us oh. show disinterest. This interest will stop the rebuilding process. Wow. This interest will cause you wow. to start mission deliverance. This interest right. will cause you to be, oh, y'all hear me today. This interest will cause you to stop being focused on the thing that you know you're supposed to focus on. This interest will cause you to have interest in things that you should not be interested in. This interest will move you away from the thing that you're supposed to be in. Huh? And, and he says not only this interest, but the second thing is discouragement. Somebody say discouragement. If you get discouragement, that's why you need determination. Discouragement is 
the influence of other people's opinions. Come on, when other people start thinking they'll if they'll discourage you, they'll start telling you, oh, it ain't gonna work. Oh, it's not gonna happen. Oh, you only got this. They'll start telling you why. There's no reason for you to do that. For no reason for you to have that. Can I tell you today that God knows? He understands if you can just stay determined. Discouragement will fall off. But most people stay discouraged. Why? Because they look at other people instead of looking at the one who spoke it. I just said something today. So discouragement is major. It will fight against every building process. It will take you, amen, out of the realm. Discouragement will take you, amen, to stay around the wrong people. See, if you stay around the wrong people, you'll stay discouraged. You got to move away from people who will hinder you from discouragement. You got to move away from people who will keep you, amen, locked into a low state. Do you hear me? You got to move around. Oh, y'all don't hear me. Sometimes you can't be around the people that you don't be around. Why? Because they mind too low. It'll bring you into a place of discouragement. Do you know you can get discouraged without you even knowing it? Somebody can just say, well, I don't think you should do that. Well, look like this. And you start now feeling discouraged and you don't even know discouragement will hide. Come on. Discouragement will linger and lurk inside of you. Why? Because you could speak something to a person and not realize you drop a seed of discouragement. Now they can't advance because you said the wrong thing. See, your ears are so powerful. They can impregnate you with a seed of discouragement. Then you say, well, yesterday I believe. Why? I feel so shaky today. Why? Because somebody said the wrong thing. So you got to guard your ear cakes. Huh? You got to guard what people say. Huh? You got to guard who you talk to. Huh? That's why I don't talk to a whole lot of people. Huh? Y'all get mad if y'all want to. I don't talk to a whole lot. I'll text you in a minute, but you ain't going to get in my ears. Huh? See, because I don't know what you're going to say. Huh? I can see a thing and cancel it. Huh? But once I hear a thing, it's hard to get it out. Y'all hear me? There is a difference huh, between the two, and you better know. That's why it said that, listen, the hand of the Lord carried him. He said, I don't even need you to hear this. I need you to come into a place that you can see this and manifest it because once you hear it you can be discouraged hear me dissatisfaction is the last one I'm done. dissatisfaction meaning that you don't expect <laughs> how can I say this good so now I'm you this. <laughs> don't expect <laughs> don't expect yourself to come out of something that you've been deep in for years in a minute. Listen to what I'm saying. Dissatisfaction. So you can say, I've been in this addiction for 20 years. Thank you, Holy Ghost. I know how to say it right. And then you come out of this space. And now you say, God, I'm walking forward. And I'm moving forward. But all of a sudden, this thing pull you again. Oh, hear me. Now, you become dissatisfied with yourself, but you made it six months. You made it a year. Y'all don't hear me. You made it. So you fail one time, and the righteous man falls seven times and gets back up. You got so, so dissatisfaction can say, well, I messed up. I may as well just go on go back. No, no, no. Wait a minute. Before you run back into full sin, come on. Before you run back and start doing everything, dissatisfaction. Tell yourself, it's okay. Get back up. Repent. Wipe yourself. Rip all oh, y'all. That's that's why repentance was put in place so you can get yourself in order and alignment and keep trend. But dissatisfaction will bring condemnation. It'll have you talking all low and sad and pity. But God don't give you no pity story. God said repent, y'all hear me, and be baptized and believe again. <laughs> dissatisfaction. You get into a whole week because of one thing you did wrong. Right. It can be a moment. You can repent, turn yourself around, get in prayer, call a fast on your own self. I'm helping Amen. somebody. Real, <laughs> don't start, oh, you see, I ain't going to never change. The devil is like, don't speak that out don't your mouth. Dissatisfaction with your flaws. That's good. Remember the first thing I said in the beginning. God is not considerate about your flaws and frailties. God is considerate a vessel that will say yes. He will perfect the frailty and flaw along the way. Because if he was concerned, he wouldn't have used David. If he was concerned, he wouldn't have used Moses. If he was concerned, y'all don't hear me. He wouldn't have used Paul. He had an anger problem. He was, y'all don't hear me. He was from the street. He was hardcore. But if God was concerned about these personalities, he wouldn't have used these kind of men. Amen. He ain't concerned about that. Thank you, Lord. He ain't concerned about that. Your dissatisfaction with yourself will stop you from rebuilding. 
That's you got to understand, God said, I'm not moved by that. Man is moved by that, but I'm not moved. I'm moved in a system that is by the Spirit. Yes. And your ability to keep coming makes a difference. Hey, it is consistency in a thing that births something out of you. I didn't get here overnight. Do you understand what I'm saying? It's a process of time to continually grow. Why? Because I was deep over here. I got to go through a process to get deep over here. You can't read the Bible in six months and say, I'm deep now. No, it don't work like that. It don't work like that. So you got to understand the process of what it takes and the stamina to build yourself to a certain place in God for the fulfillment to come and the rebuilding to happen in your life. There's no nothing, no house, no nothing, no land, nothing that's rebuilt in the day. Nothing. There is nothing that you can rebuild just like that. Thank you, Lord. But you got to have people who are integral that say we signed a contract that we're going to rebuild till we get it done. Yeah. Ooh, See, the, the contract states I'm in agreement that I'm going to do the job and I'm going to keep working until the rebuilding happens. Uh, do you understand? So you got to make a contract with the spirit of God to say, I'm going to rebuild no matter what until I get the job done. Come on. I'm not going to stay here and say, oh, no, I'm going to rebuild and I'm under contract. Now, if the contract has to be extended, somebody got to sit back down at the table and say, wait a minute. We ain't quite done with the rebuilding. Can we get an extension? How many hear me today? So I need you to ask God for an extension. See, you just need an extension. You, you, you don't say throw yourself away. You say, no, I need an extension. Help me, God. I need to work on something else. Help me, God. I need to perfect this thing. Help me, God. I need to deal with this. I need an extension in this area. We all done with this, but I need an extension over here. Do y'all hear what I'm saying? I, I'm, I'm okay with this part, but I need an extension. God understands how to give us extension for the full portion of the rebuilding to manifest that can restructure you into a place. How many ready for growth? How many ready for restructuring? God says, now I want to do a new thing in my people. I can't sing it, but I feel it in my spirit. He wants to do a new thing in his people. He wants to do a new thing in his people today. You can stand. Thank you for those that are watching online. God is doing a new thing. He's granting you an extension to rebuild today. He's, he's coming into contract with some of you to rebuild today. He's coming in position with some of you to rebuild today. God wants to do a new thing. You don't condemn yourself and just say, you know what, forget it. I'm never going to change. I was there one day too. Somebody else was there one day too. But they kept coming. They kept deciding that they're going to do this thing no matter what. Do you hear what I'm telling you? They kept saying, I'm not going to stay in the state that I'm in. I'm, I'm determined to get out. I'm determined to be rebuilt. I'm determined to be transitioned. God has a way. He put a system in place. And sometimes we don't understand systems. We don't understand systems. We don't understand the systems of the spirit. Because God is so powerful that he can rebuild you. And I love to use David because when we look at David, David was in a state of adultery, right? He has a child. The first child he has with Bathsheba, the child dies. He fasted all the way till the child died. The child died, he got up and said, okay, I washed my face. They said, why are you not fasting? Well, he said, the Lord's judgment is true, it's done. He kept living. He changed himself. He kept working on himself. He kept focusing. He kept doing what he needed to do. Now God brings back another child with the same woman. Come on, somebody. Who he once was in adultery with, but got it right. I'm talking to somebody. Else. He now blesses that same woman and him with the child called Solomon. And that's the child that builds the temple. Come on. That's the child that God honors and says, guess what? Because of your father, I honor you. God don't look, and he was a child who had issues. But God still honored him. I'm talking to somebody today. 
So if God was concerned about your issues, you hear me? I'm not saying we don't, it's just a, a, a license to sin. I'm saying if God was only concerned about your issue, he would not be able to rebuild us. But he rebuilt David. He rebuilt Solomon. Come on. He continually rebuilt because he understood that there was a placement. He understood that there was flesh. Come on. He understood that there were issues that had to be dealt with. But he was willing to labor with you and continue to flow with you until you get into the positioning to be fully rebuilt. Fully restructured. Fully in position. Hear what I'm telling you. God has a purpose. God has a purpose. You know what I found out? God uses our frailty. Because when Paul said, listen, I got this thorn in my flesh. Take it out. He was saying, I got this anger problem. I done told everybody. <laughs> he was going in. He said, I got this thing. Why don't you just take it? God said, just stay with it. Hold on to it. Don't let it go. Why? He said, my grace is sufficient. Later down the line, the same man who was horrible, now he talking soft. Come on back. Go back and get Mark. Come on, go back and do it. He was changing. The process changed him. You hear what I'm saying? The rebuilding changed him. It pushed him in position for the fulfillment. It put him in alignment for the fulfillment. Do you hear what I'm telling you today? God has a purpose. Everything that we do, God has a purpose. And God knows how to use that for the purpose of the kingdom if you allow him. So he's looking for a yes. Rebuild me. That's what he's saying today. Rebuild me. Everything in your life happens to help rebuild. Everything that has happened to you in your life helps to rebuild you. It helps to build your character. It helps to build you as a person. It helps to build you to become a wife or a husband. It helps to build you. Everything is a purpose. It's to help or orchestrate the purpose and the will of God. And the more you surrender, the more he can use those things for his purpose. The more you surrender to it, the more you come in alignment with it, the more you come in agreement with it, it helps you to surrender for the purpose of God. It helps you be humble because you know it's not you. It helps you know that, okay, God, this I'm, I'm in position now, God, for what you call me to do. But I stay humble because I understand the process of what it takes to be rebuilt. I understand that this is this is a touch, this is a touch and go. There, there's some times when, when you're on fire, there's some times when you're, you know, you 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 coast it. Do y'all hear what I'm telling you? See, we gotta talk real talk. Real talk. Cause you ain't 150 all the time. You're not even hundred all the time. Amen. Some days you 50, some days you 30. Come on. Real talk. But the key is your determination for rebuilding. Whether I'm at 50 today or whether I'm at 150 today, my determination is here. My determination is the will of God. My determination, come on somebody. I woke up and couldn't talk, but my determination allowed me to preach. See, your determination makes the difference. God's not looking at where you are, he's looking at your yielded yes as a vessel. And that yes will take you to be rebuilt. It'll put you in the sin. So you need to repent. You need to ask God for forgiveness. You need to stay in the face of God. But you don't need to beat yourself up. There's a difference. You need to have conviction, not condemnation. God wants us to be convicted. That we want to do better. We want to get it right. But not condemned that we can't never change. There's a difference. How many hear me today? Father, we thank you for this word. Thank you for the people of God. Thank you for the blessing of the Lord. Thank you for, for God just opening up avenues and streams upon your people. We pray, Father, for divine increase, oh God. 
We pray for divine increase, oh God, that they will be rebuilt for the fulfillment of what you have called them to. God, I pray that every piece, every portion, everything that is needed, for the rebuilding, for the restructuring, every piece that is needed, every portion that is needed for the rebuilding. Father, I pray in the name of Jesus that God, you'll begin to rebuild. God, you begin to rebuild your people whatever portion that needs, oh God, that they need in this moment, God. The pieces that are missing in the puzzle, the pieces that are missing in their life, the placement that is missing in them. Father, in the name of Jesus, I decree, I declare now, God, that you begin to rebuild them, God. Rebuild those areas. Rebuild in their heart. Rebuild in their soul. Rebuild in their spirit. Rebuild in their mind. Rebuild in their life. Rebuild in their family. Rebuild. But you say you will rebuild God. And take away the old waste places God. And you will be a repairer of the breach. And God I decree now God. That you repair every gap. Every breach. Every open place repair. Repair today, repair, repair for the rebuilding, repair, repair for the rebuilding, repair, repair for the rebuilding in the name of Jesus. God, I decree it now that your people will walk in it, that they step into alignment, God, for the rebuilding, God, that they receive, Father, that what you are speaking, God, that they allow themselves to be clay, that they come into the place, God, that when you ask a question, they'll say, you know, Father. For it is not based upon them, it's based upon you. And God, I decree and declare that your people will receive the manifestation in the matchless name of Jesus. And God, we give you glory for it. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Somebody give God praise. Come on, give God praise. If you're online, shoot up some hearts. Hallelujah, if you're online, receive the word of the Lord. Amen. Come on, there's something God's releasing. If you're online, shoot up some life, some hearts. Bless the Lord for what he's releasing upon this house. Hallelujah. I want to say amen. Those that are online, if you'd like to sow a seed on today, we want you to sow a seed into prayer, faith, international ministries. Amen. And you can do that through Givelify by sowing through prayer and faith 2020 at gmail.com. That's prayer and faith 2020 at gmail.com. You can do that through Givelify. You can also sell us. Amen. You can sell. Amen. Prayer and Fame 2020 at gmail.com. Amen. We appreciate you. You can PayPal us. Amen. You can send. Amen. Through PayPal at Prayer and Fame 2020 at gmail.com. We want to thank you so much for watching. If you want to sow a seed into the Word of God, if the Word has blessed you and you want to sow into the Word of God for your rebuilding, amen. Put a rebuilding seed in the ground. Amen. You can sow a seed into the Word of God through cash. Cash app, that's D-W-A-N-Y-J, amen, cash app, or you can also do it through one of the other avenues that give the five cell or PayPal and just put my rebuilding seed for the word, amen, in the slot. And we appreciate you. We thank you so much for watching us, amen, and being faithful online. God bless you to all of our online viewers. Hallelujah.